Back in 2019, I attempted to run Linux on a 20-year-old Pentium 3 computer, and my initial choice of a Linux distribution was TinyCore Linux. Unfortunately, I had a lot of trouble getting it going, and this was primarily due to hardware issues, specifically with the network. I was using a USB network device, and yeah, it just didn't recognise it. My attempts to run the basic GNU utilities of LSUSB and LSHW to try and diagnose hardware issues failed because they're not pre-installed, and without a network device I was unable to download further packages to diagnose the issue. I eventually did solve it by purchasing a new PCI-based network card. I have to say the penny pinching in the size of TinyCore does cause some issues if you do have hardware problems. And you can see the available options you can get on the sizes of TinyCore. For the ISO files, you can have an 11 meg core version, the 16 meg TinyCore version, and 106 meg Core Plus. These are all 32-bit versions of Linux, so it's primarily aimed at running on older systems. So fast forward to the current year, and we have a new release of TinyCore Linux version 11. So how impressed am I with this release? Um, yeah, not very. On the face of it, it looks absolutely similar to the previous version or previous versions of TinyCore which I've used. You get a very basic desktop. There's a nice fancy animated application launcher at the bottom of the screen. The speed of opening applications is just, well, superbly fast on my system, but yeah, I've got far too many resources for it. Anyway, before I open too much, let's take a look at the memory usage. And yeah, it's at 36 meg of RAM used, which is nothing. Although I reduced the system down to 500 meg of RAM, it actually became unbootable. I had to raise it back up to 1 gig, and this is purely because of how I've installed the applications. And I'll come on to this a bit more in a moment, but it, uh, the issue is when they're available to open. The Linux kernel is version 5.4.3. In terms of resizing applications, so there's two options to maximise. So you can maximise horizontally or vertically, or, well, both. So just looking here on the application launcher, I have Firefox and Inkscape available. But if I right click and go into the on-demand applications, you can see I have a few other applications which are on-demand in that if I click them from here, they become available to open or should. So yes, it does open, but very slow. So yeah, I've opened up GIMP now. So if I go into the application installer, the apps application, the app store repositories are from SLI TAS, so the packages are named as .tcz. On demand means the applications are available to run straight away, but part of the packages gets loaded at boot up. This has the rather damaging effect of requiring significantly more memory. Not a problem for a modern system, but let's say we're running a 20 year old Pentium 3 with 256 meg of RAM, then yeah, this would basically be unusable. On demand means the applications are installed to the hard drive but are not available to open straight away. So yeah, I had to go to that menu, go to the on demand apps and then load it that way. Takes longer for the initial opening, but lowers memory. Uh, download and load means they're just loaded into memory and not available upon reboot. And download only just means, yeah, they're only downloaded for now and nothing else is done with the packages. So one issue here is there's not actually that many packages available. It, it's really limiting. I know I landed on Abbey Word there first, but Abbey Word has failed to install. So I think, okay, let's just get another Office application. Yeah, we'll go for LibreOffice, for example, but that's not available. So no Abbey Word, no LibreOffice, no text editor, other than the basic editor here. Yeah. Sorry, no word processor, I should say, not just, not just a basic text editor. But then again, it's weird with some of the applications that are included. Um, yeah, auditing wireless networks. Okay, if that was necessary to put on. You've got some server-based applications, DNS mask here, so that could be a DNS server. PHP is available, and that is version 7.4, so yeah. That's right up to date. Let's just look at when that was last updated. Yeah, 2020. So yeah, well up to date. Firefox, 
Uh, you've got the extended support release, which I think must be at least a version or so behind because Firefox moaned when I first uh, ran it. But there are some other options of browsers. So we've got Chromium version 23. No, 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 don't use that. Current version 2012. So no, that's horrifically out of date. We've got links. Oh yeah, so we've got uh, a text-based browser. <laughs> Should you really want to view the internet that way? But if you've got a really old system, this may be your only chance. But anyway, that's enough for the application downloader. Let's move on to something else. A control panel. Backup and restore. Dating time here. That's basic stuff. Uh, yeah, network. <laughs> if your network if your network's available. There's an option to edit the applications which appear on the launcher at the bottom of the screen. Oh, actually you can move the position as well so it doesn't have to be on the bottom of the screen. We can put it onto the right hand side. Yeah. So it's a little bit flexible. There's a mounting tool and I'm happy to say that TinyCore Linux does recognize a floppy disk drive. You can adjust the mouse speed, get some stats about the system. <laughs> yeah, Ryzen 8 core processor. It's just, just a little bit more than the tiny core would need. Memory usage, as well as various other configurations here, but I notice there's nothing about the hardware. And that was one of my complaints before. You can change the background image and coloring. The Xvaser setup gives you the option of configuring the screen resolution. And yeah, this is a uh, very crude to look at. Crude and basic will be small in size. So what can I complain about? So it's very basic on the utilities that pre-installed in TinyCore. I definitely think there are some things that are lacking here. It'll be enough if all your hardware is recognized, but otherwise you could be into a bit of difficulties. Links is the world of basic text-based web browsing. Okay, what do I want to look for? Weather. Do a search. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't really see viewing the internet this way. If that's all your system can manage, then that's what you'll have to deal with. The installer for TinyCore Linux allows you to install to a USB hard drive or a whole disk. So I've actually gone for the whole disk here. Not sure I'm actually be able to run this again. Yeah, it's got some flexibility here on where you use it and who says you have to install it to a whole disk. So overall, TinyCore Linux does provide you with a basic usable system. If you're severely constrained on resource requirements, then yeah, this could be an option for you. But otherwise, I think with older systems, there are alternative options. I don't know what's going on here. I thought I was able to surf the internet earlier. I think my preferred option at the moment is Anti-X. Well, that was a look at TinyCore Linux. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.